Welcome to Crosslight's tutorial on LDMOS. LDMOS stands for Laterally Diffused Metal Oxide Semiconductor. It's a special type of MOSFET with channel direction along the surface of the device. Its width dimension, or the Z dimension, is usually large so that high current and high power can be sustained. LDMOS is fully compatible with standard CMOS technology and therefore it is widely used in integrated power circuits. The basic structure of LDMOS can be seen from the schematic 2D cross section extracted from a 3D structure. This is a net doping plot. We use red lines to indicate different materials in the device. The region below Y equals zero is the original substrate with some part replaced by oxide during device process. Part of the substrate region has been implanted with boron. On the substrate, gate and field plate are formed by polysilicon. Silicon dioxide is used for isolation and gate oxide. Metal is used to form electrodes. The metal piece on the left is the source electrode. The piece on the right is the drain electrode. Polysilicon is used for the gate and the bottom side of the substrate is usually grounded. The blue region below the polysilicon is the channel which is controlled by the poly gate. Electrical current flows from the drain along silicon oxide interface in the P channel on the left side all the way to the source electrode. We'll discuss more detailed steps later in this tutorial. The 3D structure of LDMOS is rather complicated which makes 3D TCAD simulation rather challenging. Crosslight software has developed a special mix coordinate method which takes into account the special symmetry of the LDMOS. This tutorial movie demonstrates how to set up a process and device simulation of LDMOS in 3D. Let's start with the design masks for the device. First we're going to open Nova TCAD and activate the mask editor program and then import the design masks. This is the design mask of an LDMOS. We use the masks to explain how an LDMOS is formed. To explain the process, let's take a look at the final structure and the net doping distribution. We start from a P-type substrate. Then we implant phosphorus to isolate from the P-substrate. The final device is formed within the N-well. Let's take a look at the first mask layer. The part to be processed is labeled purple in the schematic diagram on the left. For the sake of demonstration, we'll use the preset parameters on the right hand side table of the mask editor. The purpose of this mask is to form shallow trench isolation. For simplicity, we use the mask to replace silicon by oxide to form isolation. To change materials, we set the materials and the depth of the change over here. The purpose of the mask layer is to form oxide isolation. After filling in the parameters, we click on Save Layer Property. This plot here is how the oxide isolation would look like after using the mask layer. The next mask layer is used for a P-type implant. The property of the mask is named General, meaning it is a general purpose photoresist layer. For general purpose photoresist, we do not need to fill in any process parameters. For the next few mask layers, we're going to skip the details of the process parameters to focus on the purpose and the results of each mask layer. So the blue part in this plot is a result of the P-type implant from the previous mask. We also see some red colored N-type doping, which is from the N-type implant on the whole wafer without any masks. The next mask layer is used to process the polysilicon and oxide layer. Before this mask step, we need to grow a thin oxide layer as gate oxide. 
Then we deposit polysilicon. Then we use this mask layer to etch the polysilicon and the thin gate oxide below. Careful with the depth of the etch so that the deeper oxide will remain as oxide isolation. The next mask layer consists of two parts, an outer ring and an inner strip. The purpose is for the implantation of phosphorus for a form source and drain electrode. The outer red part is the source and the red part inside is the drain. This is the net doping after using the mask for implant. Now let's take a look at the next mask layer, which is just a ring. Its purpose is to enhance the p-type. This is to prevent the onset of latch up. The next mask layer is for etching of the VIA hole. Before making the VIA hole, we need to deposit a layer of oxide. The VIA holes are made for the drain region over here and for the source electrode on the outer ring. This is the last layer of mask. Again, it consists of two parts. A layer of metal is deposited before using the mask to etch out the electrodes. The straight piece is for the drain electrode, while the curved piece is for the source electrode. The polysilicon would be used for the gate electrode. The back side of the device would be grounded. Now I'll show you how to set up the mesh. We need to enable all of the layers to be used. Then we click on basic mesh. This will set the grid lines for each mesh plane. If the mesh is not uniform, we need to define how the grid spacing varies. Also, we need to set the substrate material and thickness. And then we hit apply. Finally, we need to set the mesh position in the Z direction. We call such mesh plane a cut line. Since this LDMOS has special symmetry with round corners, we use a mixture of rectangle and cylindrical coordinate systems to reduce the total number of mesh planes. To make a mesh plane cut, we use the right click to select the mix coordinate system cut. For more details on how to set up the mesh plane cuts for such mixed coordinate systems, please see Crosslight's other tutorials on YouTube. You can find related mixed coordinate system tutorials on YouTube by searching with keywords like Crosslight or Mask Editor or UMOS 3D. These are the final mesh plane cuts right here. Assuming we made the right setting for the mesh plane cuts, we're going to click on 3D Save and Cut. Here, each line is a mesh plane cut. The mesh of each cut is the basic mesh that we set previously. The 3D Save and Cut button will also generate and save many files needed for 3D TCAD simulation. The main input file is named temp.in. Later, we would rename temp.in and then add more detailed steps not yet included by the major structural masks. Let's take a look at the final process input file here. To run the device simulation, we need to first define the electrical boundary or contacts in Apsis. This will allow us to apply the electrical biases. After setting the contacts, we need to include a new material 3d.sol file containing electro definition. Note that process simulation and device simulation works with an opposite sign for the y-axis. When we define the geometry of the electrical boundary, we need to use the opposite sign for the y-axis. We usually assign a number for each electrode. Here, Numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 are for source, gate, gain, and substrate contacts.
In the mixed coordinate systems, the z coordinates are either microns or angle degrees. For example, at the round corner part, the z coordinate is the angle in degrees plus the previous rectangle z coordinate in microns. Finally, we hit save and generate. Now let's start the Apsys device simulation. We can load the simulation project by opening the main simulation input file. For more details on performing device simulation, please see our other tutorials on YouTube. Let's just assume the input files are all set. For BV simulation, let's take a look at the input files. We added impact ionization models to enable breakdown physics. Please note that the drain is labeled contact 3. Another simulation we make is ID on simulation. We may disable the impact ionization in this case for better conversions. We bias the gate to 5.5 and the drain to 50 volts. Now we're ready to launch the simulation. Let's just quickly check out the simulation results. Now we're going to open the .std output file and plot the IV for contact 3. Contact 3 is the drain, I believe. Alright, uh, we can see here that the breakdown voltage is about 90 volts. This 90 volts is a typical demo value, it's not yet optimized. This is the field distribution at breakdown. And this here is the potential distribution at about 100 volts. This is the current density distribution. Um, as expected, the current flows within the channel. Uh, this here is the IDVD curve. The results we got here are similar to what you'd expect from an experiment. And that concludes our tutorial. We hope to see you in another one of our tutorials. Have a good one.